You can pray until you faint. But if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. And there's no need of running and no need of saying, Honey, I'm not going to get in the mess. To Black Power Talks. I'm Dr. Matsumela Odom. And my name is Dexter Mlawingu. Uhuru means freedom in Swahili. And freedom is on our minds 24 7. On November 19, 2021, 18 year old Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted of all charges. Rittenhouse had been charged with two counts of homicide, one count of attempted homicide, two counts of reckless endangerment one count of unlawful possession of a firearm, and one count of curfew violation following an incident on August 25, 2020. On August 25, 2020, Kyle Rittenhouse shot and killed two men and injured another man in Kenosha, Wisconsin. The men were protesting the police shooting and paralyzing of an African motorist, Jacob Blake, on August 23, 2020. These protests were part of the global uprising in the wake of the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota on May 25, 2020. Rittenhouse was a part of a contingency of reactionary forces that had organized in defense of private property in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Rittenhouse is from Antioch, Illinois, a North Chicago suburb about 20 miles from Kenosha. In a seeming contrast, the three white men who murdered Ahmaud Aubrey an African jogger in Glen County, Georgia, were found guilty on November 24, 2021. On February 23, 2020, Ahmaud Arbery, an avid jogger, was lynched by father and son George McMichael and Travis McMichael and their neighbor William Bryant. At the same time, Ahmaud was jogging down Holmes Road in Brunswick, Glen County, Georgia. The local district attorney's office attempted to cover up the killing by blaming Aubrey and promoting the slanderous idea that Aubrey was attempting to burglarize a construction site that he had examined while he rested during his run. Prominent lawyer Benjamin Crum declared this conviction historic and justice served. Yet, as African internationalists, we know that African people will know neither peace, prosperity, nor human dignity until this colonialist domination is overthrown and the power over our lives rests in our own hands. The divergent acquittal of Rittenhouse and the conviction of the McMichaels Bryan gang has come as a shock to many in the liberal left sectors of the colonial media who identify racism as the core problem in the United States. Rittenhouse has subsequently traveled the colonial media circuit declaring that he is not a racist. He supports Black Lives Matter, he says, and he's promised to destroy the AR-15 that he used in the August 25, 2020 shootings. As African internationalists, we know that the central contradiction that we as Africans face is colonialism. Colonialism is the foreign and alien domination of a people for the purpose of economic exploitation and political advantage. To strip a people of all human and civil rights and to rule without regard to law. We know that power in the hands of the African working class is the highest form of true justice and liberation. No colonial courts can give us this. 
In this episode, we will deepen the analysis of these differing judgments by hearing the words of various Uhuru movement leaders, Chairman Amalia Shetela and President Kalambayi Andinet, and speaking with Kobina Bantashengo, the African People's Socialist Party, USA's Southern Regional Representative. It is there that Kobina is organizing the Black People's Court to take the African community from protest to power. On November 17th, I joined Kalambay and Danette, the international president of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, in a live address on the organization's Facebook page to bring clarity to these trials, stating that their colonial courts cannot give us justice. It is in this live stream that we demanded Black community control of the police and power in the hands of the African people. Let's take a listen to President Kalambay's appeal in that live stream address. Um, I remember seven years ago when I um, came into political life uh, when Mike Brown was murdered. So I was mobilized just like um, the current event right now with this verdict coming down. Um, We were in motion, the African working class was in motion um, because of the death of Mike Brown August 9th. Um, And when I met Chairman, I met a revolutionary party that had understanding um, why Mike Brown was murdered. They wasn't confused and they wasn't shocked. They wasn't caught with their pants down because they had seen this over and over and over again. And um, Chairman came with the analogy and the understanding of um, understanding that we are one people, that we are not fighting racism, that this is not about racism. Um, this, this, this white man that went down there um, and act this as a police, if he actually was a police or not. That's not the question. The question is that we don't have power as a people when things happen to us to do something back. We have no power. So the discussion today is about having power. The demand has to be power. We can't um, demand for us to have a review board with no power. We can't um, have a um, demand that is calling on us to just, you know, have a, you know, a therapist to figure out how to get all the racist thoughts out of white people's head. We can't do that. That's too much at stake. My kid's future, your kid's future is at stake. We have lost numerous of Africans from Emmett Till to Mike Brown to, um, you know, various different Africans. We can name them till we blew in the face um, of all the Africans that have been murdered, that we know their name and the Africans that they have not even um, been even brought to trial for their murders as well. So we don't have, we know that we need power. Only thing that's going to stop us from, you know, going to the same people that oppress us and say, Master Sir, can you please give me some justice? Master Sir, can you lock somebody up? Because I'm telling you with a guilty verdict or not guilty verdict, it is not justice. It's not justice until they all are locked up. It's not justice until somebody is charged with genocide. The call has to be for the African working class. We cannot be bamboozled. We cannot, you know, go with these slogans that take us nowhere. But the call has to be for black community control of the police. Black community control of the police. The black people that um, have a democratic right to say that the people that police us in our neighborhood have to be under the control of the community that they police. And it's the black community. So let me say, you have to put the black word in her. You have to put it in a face and let them know that we're talking about power, black power, black people, the black community having power over the poor people that we pay salaries to and most cities budget um, includes police officers, and that's a huge part of the city budget. And the budget is made by taxes, and so it's our democratic right for paying taxes to add to um, have a demand for black community control of the police. Yes, it's important for us not to be caught up in the light. You know, we can't get caught up in the the, the this this the whole court in the whole smoking mirrors of one person going to jail. We have to know that the reason why we are upset and outraged at the president at the time saying that this man is a a hero, he is for them because it's two Americas. I'm not offended. This is what I knew. 
But this time, he actually said it out of his mouth instead of hiding it. So, you know, we have no crumbs about it. We say we have to fight for power, not for likes. This is not about likes. We don't care about your love. If you never hit that love um, button or that like button, it's not about likes. We say power because when you have the power, they will learn to like you. They hit the like button too. You get enough power and people will get motivated to hit like. So we have to struggle for power. And power is black community control of the police. For us to be able to have the power, we decide who on the review board. We, you know what I'm saying? If, we, if you get black community control, you know you got it because the people say who could be on the review board. We say that we don't care if you have a record. We don't care if you owe child support. We don't care. We want those type of people on the review board because who know best than the people that have been victimized by the system before? Them are the, them are the perfect candidates to be on black community control of the police. The bus driver, the school teacher, um, the person that pick up the trash in the community. Pookie, Ray Ray. We need those people to be part of the community to set the terms of what police should be doing from day to day, from time to time in our community. If they carry in guns to kill, then we should be able to have power over their life. That's a rip to me. I don't know. That makes sense, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but that make a lot, a lot of sense. That make a lot of sense. You know, it make a lot of sense for us to have that. And that's a democratic right. We ain't even talking revolution here. We talking about a democratic right that we can have in every city that don't sell out the long-term goal of complete liberation. So if you're gonna fight for um you know, to improve a social system, make sure it's a revolutionary demand, a demand that put the power in the people's hands, not, uh, you know, a re, uh, you know, ask for body cameras. So, I mean, I guess, you know, we got body cameras. How many times have we seen Eric Gordon get choked? How many times we have to see this roll down our Facebook pages and see our brothers and sisters and black people be murdered? I don't need to see it anymore. I don't even need you to tell me what happened. I know what happened. You know, I'm not asking questions anymore because I understand colonialism have to murder colonized Africans every day, all day long, or this system couldn't um, continue to go. The social system would collapse if police stopped killing black people. Yes, they have to. It, it, it's a must. So what do we have to do? So we can sit here, we can yell, we can scream, we can say black power, we can say fist up, fight back, touch one, touch all. Yes, and we're going to say those things. We're going to say them loud, but them are words and your actions is everything. Let's build, comrades. We're not waiting for no verdict. We're building our own stuff. We're building for power so we can overturn this oppression and overturn all their courts and make sure that all these, it's a lot of people that got to go to jail to the bare minimum. That was Colin Bayanzanet, international president of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement. You are listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today, we are discussing African community control of the judicial process. Following the slaying of Mike Brown in Ferguson, St. Louis, by killer cop Darren Wilson, in 2015, Colin Bailly took part in the Black People's Grand Jury. The Black People's Grand Jury was held in St. Louis, Missouri on January 3rd and 4th, 2015, and hosted by the International People's Democratic Horror Movement. The Black People's Grand Jury put killer cop Darren Wilson and the imperialist state on trial. In the following segment, Chairman Amalia Shatella gives a political summation of the Black People's Grand Jury. When questioned about the legitimacy of the Black People's Grand Jury, Chairman noted that slavery was legal. Quote, The question for us is not whether an oppressor's law is legal or not. The question is whether it is oppressive to Black people, African people, in this country. End quote. Chairman goes on to note that the colonial enslavement formed the foundation of the U.S. legal system, and that when found to be guilty, Nat Turner declared that he did not feel guilty. Chairman Amali Chatella declared the Black People's Grand Jury, quote, a step in the direction of self-determination for African people. Let's listen to the following segment of the Black People's Grand Jury press conference. Before Chairman Amali are brief comments by Zaki Baruti, 
President General of the Universal African People's Organization. Well, the only statement that I can make is, first of all, salute uh, Brother Omale Yesitelli as the lead prosecutor uh, with uh, the importance of uh, this Black People's Grand Jury being very historic, being a statement that we as a people must become self-determinant and we cannot allow those outside of our community to determine what we deem as necessary steps for justice. So it's in that spirit that uh, our organization probably stood with this process. As he mentioned, it was very transparent. Uh, it's very transparent in terms of the grand jury. Uh, members were able to ask a number of questions of the people who uh, gave testimony, as well as we opened it up for the public. So it set a precedent. It set a precedent in terms of if there is to be justice here in this country, then there needs to be a total different approach to incidents, especially racial incidents, in which uh, the accused many times are white police officers who so many times in this country are set free and through legal loopholes. It sets a precedent that if there are to be grand juries outside of our community, minimally, minimally, grand juries are to be of equal numbers of black and whites participating, if there are to be a need for a grand jury. But as my brother pointed out, Bob McCullough didn't even need that process. He just set the stage to uh, project the mockery of what happened several months, I mean, with his decision that Darren Wilson was not to be indicted. Well, so you were the lead prosecutor on this? I was. Okay. Can I ask you, what, what's the message that you want sent? Obviously, this decision holds no legal bearing here, but I mean, what, what's the message that you come out of this? Why is this significant in your mind? Well, the first thing I want to say is this. Slavery was legal. The question for us is not whether an oppressor's law is legal or not. The question of whether it is oppressive. The message more than anything was to black people, African people in this country who are victimized by police terror and murder throughout this country. If it were simply a case of one individual having been killed on August 9th, the community in Ferguson would not have rebelled the way it did. It could have been passed off as an accident. It could have been passed off as a possible just shooting. But that wasn't the case. And we also saw that immediately after that, Von Derrick Myers, over on Shaw, was gunned down, shot eight times, seven of which were in the back. We saw in July before that the public execution of Eric Garner choked to death. And I'm not even sure the choking was the worst part of the crime. Anybody who saw what happened, the inhumane way that he was treated with his head by police being pushed through the pavement. There's something that's happening in this country and has been happening for a long time. For the duration of our presence in this country as black people, we've been struggling to try and end the oppression of our people, starting with trying to rid ourselves of a process of having been kidnapped and forced, a forced labor that built the economy of this country. It is this forced labor, this economy, upon which the legal foundation of America rests. So when we say uh, it has no legal bearings, actually Nat Turner, who led a rebellion to kill slave masters and overturn slavery, was brought to court, was tried, convicted, called guilty. He made the statement then, I don't feel guilty. I don't think he was guilty either. He was guilty of a crime because slavery was legal. So to say that this has no legal bearing, I think, is to misunderstand what this is about. Yeah, I'm going to rephrase it. What's significant about it then? What's significant about it 
as Brother Zaki Baruti just mentioned, it is a step in the direction of self-determination. It is something that's being done in the face of demonstrations, protests happening around this country, around police violence. Must, and many times, this is protest that doesn't seem to have direction. Many times it doesn't seem uh, to be aimed toward any end. What this process we've engaged in says is there must be an end, and that end is self-determination. That black people must take control of our lives. We cannot trust our children, the future of our community, in the hands of this establishment that has proved to us over and over again is disregard for black life. So it is a step towards self-determination to have two courts have occurred, two hearings, two grand juries. We heard more or less the same evidence. We applied here, however, the law. Grand juries are not trials. Bob McCullough's inundation of the people with 5,000 pages of testimony violated every principle of what a grand jury is about that's ever applied any place in this country. Grand juries are for the purpose simply of getting the evidence and information that would inform a determination of whether an indictment should happen, and that is simply probable cause that a crime has been committed. Bob McCullough himself, and I heard him say it, uh, and that testimony was provided for the grand jury, that the testimony of Doran Johnson alone was enough for an indictment. He chose not to do that. Instead, he chose to bring witness number 40, who he said he knew was lying, who testified over two days in defense of Darren Wilson, I guess taking a break from her fundraising efforts that rewarded Darren Wilson for the execution of Mike Brown. This was a black people's grand jury. That was an extraordinarily serious event. We hear nothing from anybody. Anybody in the world who wanted to see what happened and whether it was a just proceeding had an opportunity to do that. They could walk through these doors and have a seat in the auditorium. They could watch it online from any place in the world, which is not something that Bob McCullough and St. Louis County can say about what they did with the case of Darren Wilson and Mike Brown. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that was Zaki Baruti of the Universal African People's Organization, followed by Chairman Amali Shatella of the African People's Socialist Party. You are listening to Black Power Talks, produced by WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today we are discussing African community control of the judicial process. Our guest today is Kobina Bantushango. Advancing this conversation today, we speak with Kobina Bantushango the Southern Regional Representative for the African People's Socialist Party USA. Kobina oversees all the work of the Uhuru Movement in the Southern region of the United States. In 2006, Kobina led a public campaign to defend the Liberty City Seven, seven young African men framed on terrorism charges by the FBI in Miami, Florida, and railroaded in the federal courts. Kobina and the African People's Socialist Party Southern region are organizing the Black People's Court to take the African liberation struggle from protest to power. In a public statement on the Black People's Court, they state the following. We are clear that we must continue to protest the police killings and injustices that African people experience. We must also organize beyond the protest. We consistently do not get justice in their courts. We must build our own black power for justice to overturn this relationship African people have to this colonial system. We are calling on you to participate in a black power people's court to unite against all the injustices that the African working class is experiencing throughout the southern region. This will also assist us in quantifying the damage politically, economically, and mentally. The APSP has a history of building tribunals for reparations against the U.S. in 1982, 
to the black people's grand jury in 2015 following the assassination of Mike Brown. We have a responsibility to lead the African working class to power and our ability to govern ourselves. Uhuru Kobino, welcome back to Black Power Talks. It's been a while. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity, Comrade uh, Dr. Dr. Odom. Uh, it has been a while, been too long, but I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be on Black Power Talk and look forward to the discussion. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uhuru, Uhuru. Yeah, so we opened the show discussing the divergent verdicts of the acquittal of Kyle Rittenhouse versus the conviction of the killers of Ahmaud Arbery. What is your summation of these supposedly different verdicts? How do you sum them up as an African internationalist? Well, I, I think what it represents is uh, uh, that white power in power, you know what I'm saying, colonialism uh, working in his own best interest. And uh, it's seeing Rittenhouse uh, uh, as a situation where it works in his best interest to uh, find uh, him not guilty, uh, even though it's, I mean, there's no doubt that he was guilty, but uh, it doesn't work in the interest of colonialism to um, to convict him. And I think we have to recognize this is why we say that we fight for, for black power, why we fight to overturn colonialism, because power in our hands, when we look at a verdict, we bring about justice that works in the best interest of the masses and not the best interest of the colonial uh, uh, powers that, that that be. So you see Rittenhouse, um, who there's a lot of variables there that uh, they want, you know, colonialism give uh, white men the right to uh, bear arms, white a right to defend themselves, and this was the argument that they was making in 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 the court. Not to mention that you know he went to a place and and murdered people, you know, uh, which they have a history of. So it's not an issue for them to murder anybody, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but when when you talk about the colonized being a part of this, this process. The colonized, you know, don't have that same right uh, or don't have the power to exercise that right or work in our best interest. And I think what we find, you know, in the in the uh, Amaya Albury uh, uh, trial, you know, again, I think that colonialism, it wasn't necessarily about justice. It was more so about it was in the best interest of uh, the colonial system to. Uh, concede to uh, uh, convicting them, even though they're going to go through a process and we'll see the outcome where appeals after appeals. And you see that in several other cases uh, where they, they go through an appeal process and, you know, um, it may get a lesser sentence, but, you know, I think they had to give a conviction because they, what they recognize is that the people and the masses were beginning to take to the street. And uh, if they didn't give uh, uh, a, a uh, guilty verdict in that situation, that the system colonialism would, would, would suffer a blow that they weren't willing to take at that particular time. Uhuru. 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 Yeah, thank you, Carmen. I really appreciate that answer. Um, I just I really like how you just, you know, replaced uh, the term justice with um, um, the state working in its best interests, because that's exactly what was given. It wasn't the, the state giving us justice. It was the state working in its best interest. And, um, you know, just like what you said, I mean, they made the decision because they made it to um, sustain themselves because I know if they had went the other way, they would have had a, a rebellion on their hands, uh, you know, very similar to, you know, the George Floyd case. So, you know, we understand the system can't give us justice. I think it was Ida B. Wells who said, you know, the same system that lynches you can't uh, give you justice. So I really appreciate uh, that answer, comrade. But um, so you lead the work of the Ahua movement in the southern region of the U.S., which encompasses Georgia, uh, the side of the lynching of Ahmaud Arbery. His killers might have been convicted, but this by no means is justice for the centuries of brutality that we have faced in the U.S. generally and the southeastern states more specifically. 
So can you tell us of some other recent cases where the killers of African people have not been held accountable for their deeds in the region? Oh, shoot, man. The, 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 the list. The, oh, the, the, I know the, how, much, how much time you got. <laughs> right. We, we, could, we could take up the whole show in about 20 more just with that. Right. But I mean, I mean, some of the things that I'll point out, you know, uh, it's slavery for one, you know what I'm saying? But that's that's. You know, when you look at just 10 years ago, the same state, you know, um, uh, told uh, uh, Troy Davis, who they executed, you know, uh, for a crime that they know he did not commit, that he wasn't even in the same city as that. It was a high profile case because people was trying to fight and uh, to get him a retrial because, you know, he didn't do it. And um, the judge told his sister you know, in court that it is not uh, unconstitutional to execute an innocent man as long as he, as long as they feel he had a fair trial, you know what I'm saying? And so you have uh, a situation like that. You look at uh, um, the grandmother, 94 years old, who was, who was murdered in her home, you know, and they said that, um, they tried to justify it and people took to the street. They, they said that uh, they had the wrong address and somehow they still didn't uh, commit a crime. You know what I'm saying? You have, um, you know, uh, countless situations where, uh, you know, they, they murder us in the street and, 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 and they, they say that it's justifiable homicide or they 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 kill you in your own home and say that somehow you was wrong a 94 year old woman was wrong for being killed in her house sleep in her house you know what i'm saying and they bum rushed her house and 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 went in had again had the wrong address and and and, and shot her in, in, in cold blood you have uh, the situation that we were uh, heavily involved in around Desi Woods, you know what I'm saying? It was a police officer that kidnapped two young African women and attempted to rape them. And, and they uh, defended themselves and, and, and in the same way that they say Rittenhouse defended himself, but they defended themselves from being brutally raped and, 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 and murdered the officer for that. And somehow they were convicted of a crime. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's, it has a long, a long history of uh, these type of struggles. And again, I mean, I think this is why the African People's Socialist Party fights for uh, getting power and governing ourselves because these laws, these, uh, 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 the state, it represents the interests of, of, of colonialism. And like you said earlier, the resistance, the rebellions, you know, uh, you take just something as simple as, as, as uh, uh, Colin Kaepernick, you know, he had been kneeling to, to to fight against these injustices and it took the rebellions in the street before they, before like uh, you had, the, I think it was the Congress, the people came out and died, she keeps kneeling, talking about they understand that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because the power comes from, you know, uh, the people and, 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 and that's what we have to recognize. It wasn't you know, any uh, process that people voted and got the right people in. It was the people rebelling and resisting uh, this terror and tyranny in the street that uh, give them to concede. And what we have to be careful of as, as organized and, 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 and the masses itself is not to be duped and, and, and be allow them to pacify us because they understand that they have to sacrifice somebody to pacify people to get out of the street and stop rebelling and go back to, you know, life as usual. So you can continue to be oppressed and colonized, you know, with, with little resistance. Uhuru. 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 Yeah. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. And I think this really underscores what we'll, in, uh, what we're going to talk about, which is the importance of the black community courts and, uh, place and power into the hands of the African working class. So one thing that I was thinking about is your experience with the Liberty City 7 case. Can you tell us about that case and how does that underscore the need for 
both black community control of the police and black community control of the judicial process. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the struggle always has to be for power. Anything less than that is, 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 uh, you know, really doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Because it only, if you're not struggling for power and to govern yourself and to be able to control every aspect of uh, your, your uh, government or society, then what you're trying to find is your place in your own enslavement. You know, the Liberty City 7 case was a case that we took on um, uh, and even coined the term Liberty City 7 because it was seven young Africans. And they just did a documentary on them because, uh, yeah, they just did it. I think it was PBS that did the documentary. But uh, it was seven young Africans that was in Liberty City, which has been uh, stated as the one of the poorest communities in the in, in the country. And these young Africans were out in the community trying to uh, 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 mentor young men and, and trying to teach them martial arts and, and, and trying to even get their own uh, uh, construction business off the ground. And the FBI uh, uh, sent two informants in to basically entrap them and char- and and. and and uh, started to have discussions with them about participating with Al Qaeda and 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 doing certain things to uh, commit terrorist acts uh, on the United States. And uh, at one point, they became suspicious of the informants and pulled back. And the government, the FBI, uh, gave them two thousand dollars, bought them work boots bought them a new building, gave them a new building, and then uh, asked them to uh, go take pictures of a federal building. And they started to pull back. And that's when they gave them the resources. And they, and they didn't even have the, the, the resources to have the camera or the film. And they uh, bought that for them and transported them to go take the pictures. And, and then they convicted them of four counts of... Uh, conspiracy to, to to terrorism, which each count, I think, held something like 77 years. And we intervened and 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 began to uh, build a Liberty City 7 committee because we understand that we need not only Black community control over the police, but we need uh, a, a Black people's uh, court, which the African People's Social Party has always preached that. Chairman O'Malley Zatella has always pushed that. And we had the first tribunal um, uh, on reparations in, in 1982 uh, in, in New York because we understood that we're struggling for power and not for anything else. So in that particular case, you know, we began to organize. We went into Miami, uh, organized the Liberty City 7 uh, committee consisting of people from the community, all of the seven families, and, and uh, began to uh, Put propaganda in the community to to you know come to 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 come to understand uh, that these guys you know didn't do anything but attempt to help the community and it was the FBI that came in and and and, and trapped them and and and, and uh, wrote a whole script and and then charged them with the script that they wrote and um, and and you know they wind up. Uh, having a mistrial twice and didn't get a conviction until the third trial. And they tried them back to back to back to back to back. And, and they, they put out all type of propaganda slandering them. But this is the court trying to save the state, trying to save face because they understood that. I mean, once they got out, you know, what was going on and this was their way of trying to turn the war on terror into the African community, similar to how they turned the war on drugs into the African community. And this was that this was their, their strategy to do that. And I think that from the organizing that we did, we contributed to, you know, uh, not only uh, informing the community what went on, but uh, contributed to them even having, you know, uh, uh, the mistrial and being stuck. And, and, and uh, it wasn't again to the third trial that they wind up convicting those comrades. But this is why we have to have power. Because is we're not, uh, we need to have a black people's 
a court uh, process because we're not uh, interested in, 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 in the court system trying to work in the best interest of the colonizer. We have to really work in the best interest of ourselves and have the power to say how uh, when we hold court does this work in the best interest of the people and not in the best interest of the people that's in power, uh, not in the best interest of the of colonialism, because, you know, the colonized will always be the victims of uh, a colonized institu institution and particularly the court system, which we see all over, you know, uh, Africans being locked up uh, uh, every day, you know what I'm saying? And and that doesn't work in the best interest of, of the masses that work in the best interest of colonialism. It profits colonialism. And this is why we have to have our own courts, our own black community control over the police, uh, uh, the power to determine, you know, uh, what justice look like in our community. Because justice for the slave master is definitely the opposite of justice for the slave. Oh, thank you for that, comrade. Thank you. Um, you know, I really appreciate this answer. And just from what you explained, it, it's really evident that we understood, we've understood historically that our struggle is really one for power. You know, it's one for control from the um, the reparations tribunal to black community control of the police and, and the black people's grand jury. We understood that it's always been a, a struggle for state power and um, nothing less than that. So um, I really appreciate that answer and, and that work. You know, even up to uh, today's uh, Black People's Courts being built. So y'all are organizing these Black People's Courts, comrade. And uh, Chairman described the Black People's Grand Jury as a step in the direction toward African self-determination. So how does the Black People's Courts advance the president set by the Black People's Grand Jury as well as the reparations tribunal? Well, I think I think it is it's a it's a process uh, like the black people's grand jury. One of the things that that happens is that you contribute to raising the African working class to its proper stature uh, and, and help because like like the chairman uh, always put forth uh, is that, um, you know, um, the 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 state. Um, you know, since since we suffer from the Black Power Revolution, the, the defeat of the Black Power Revolution of, of the 60s, the, the military defeat, it puts people out of political life. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people don't even know that they can resist. They don't know. It's like, you know, if, if, if you was reading or watching a movie that said, you know, the police shot your child. And you go right back to that same police department to bring you justice for the child that they shot. You would think that was bizarre. Right. And so this is what happened when they pushed us out of political life from the military defeat um, uh, of the Black Power Revolution in the 60s. So we have a responsibility to bring when people back to political life and, and for black power in, in a way that uh, we, we get justice, not defined by them, but defined by the people themselves. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you got black, if you win people to uh, a, a, a black people's court, like a black grand jury, what you win is that the people are getting justice that they have defined, as opposed to a justice that, that that's defined by the colonial, the colonial masters. And because colonial masters justice would say justify by homicide over and over and over and over again. You know, the people's justice would say guilty, 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 you know, and because you know that they kill Michael Brown. You know what I'm saying? That's why we have the Black People Grand Jury that came with a different verdict than the verdict of the grand jury um, uh, of, 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 um, of the Mike Brown case. The other thing is that we have a responsibility in educating the masses and, and winning. This is part of the process of winning the people back to political life and, and the war of ideas that we have a responsibility to win people to um, to be educated about the system, to even understand what the hell is a grand jury. Because when you, when most times when a state comes to say a grand jury, just like when they tell you to go vote, most times they don't inform you what the hell is this? What, what, what is this process? How does this benefit me? How does this, you know, so we have responsibility to expose the contradictions of what a grand jury is or what a court is and, and, and then define it as the people 
have the power to make these de- determinations and what is in our best interest to do it. And when, when people are informed in that way, you know, uh, not only does it become a powerful tool for people to bring about the justice that they that 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 works in our interest, it also exposes the contradictions that the state and its government uh, uh, raise on people by keeping people ignorant and, and and not and uninformed about what the whole process is about. Uhuru, Uhuru, Uhuru. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for that, Corbina. Um, because, you know, you talked about uh, this as a process to bring Africans back into political life. And we know that with the military defeat of the African Revolution of the 1960s, that Africans have gone to the state to solve problems that the state has no interest in solving for us. So let me ask you this. The Black People's Courts will also allow us to solve all of the issues in our community. In this way, Africans will not have to go to the colonial state to solve our problems, namely, you know, horizontal issues going on in our community. So can you explain the function of the Black People's Courts? How is it going to work? Oh, yeah, because, you know, the, the Black the black People Court would have a dual responsibility. Uh, well, maybe even more, you know, because one on one end, uh, you know, we have to fight the state and the injustice coming from the vertical violence. But we also have a responsibility to uh, fight the horizontal violence that exists in in our community. And so if you win, and we have seen semblance of this, and and, in fact, uh, the the party has uh, organized uh, a process uh, in different situations where we were able to uh, have two warring communities uh, that was committing horizontal violence in our community uh, to come to the table and be a mediator and develop a truce, and 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 even the state attempted to intervene and and release somebody from prison that wasn't a part of the process of of educating of of of, of uh, uh, resolving some contradictions, finding out what contradictions were and, and, and bringing these forces together as an attempt to re-spark and reignite the, 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 the contradiction. And, um, and it was there, it was, it was the, the forces uh, that was with him that informed the party. They didn't call the police, they called the African People's Socialist Party that was able to go out and intervene in the in, in the situation before anything occurred, and find out who this who this comrade was, who this comrade had issues with, pull them together, uh, put boxing gloves on them, get into the boxing ring, hammer it out, do what you got to do. They both went in there and handled their business and walked out of like men with no casualties, with nobody being injured, with nobody you know. Uh, 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 being degraded, they both handled their business like men and walked out of there like men and squashed the beef and the truce was able to be able to to continue. And these type of things we have to do because that works in our best interest. It does not work in our best interest uh, uh, when when uh, there's horizontal violence. Uh, but we have to also understand that the horizontal violence comes uh, because the state, the vertical violence, create a situation where we fighting over crumbs and fighting over resources that is controlled by the state. And they manipulate the situation to, to keep us uh, in a state of, 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 of poverty and, 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 and survival that uh, we may commit crimes against one another so we don't focus on who the real enemy is. So we have a black community control. I mean, uh, black people's court has a responsibility to win Africans to to that process, and so that we work in our best interests and uh, fight the vertical violence as opposed to each other. And when you think about it, when you think about it, <laughs> you know, it's always a contradiction because this this is something that a lot of times the state would try to you know uh, define. And say that you know um, this is happening in our community, 
and people should snitch and all this type of thing. But the reality is this, is that the state, even when the state in the military, when they shoot each other, they say that it's friendly fire. When they do these type of things, uh, you know, these type of contradictions, you know, they have a, a, a blue code or, or a code of silence that they have because they know it works in their best interest for them to define what happens internally uh, uh, in a way that it benefits, you know, anybody that 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 uh, that is that that gets wind of it. And right. so we have to really look at defining things for ourselves and what in our best interest in the court and the and the black people's court contributes to doing all of that. Mm. Thank you, comrade. Thank you. I appreciate that. So it really does sound like there's a whole lot of dynamic work uh, being done around this campaign uh, to really uh, move toward achieving actual concrete uh, state power uh, for African peoples. So where can people go to get involved and help you build these black people's courts? Um, how can they access your survey? Tiny URL, it's tinyurl.com, Black People's Court Survey. Go to that link and, and, and fill out the survey, you know, and, and is information, put your information in there so we can follow up with you because we want you to be a part of this process to build a Black People's Court. And we want Black People's Court in every community that we in. We want to win our people to our own court system and, and, and again, to fight for injustice, whether it's vertical violence or horizontal violence that works in our best interest. We have to define that. So, again, go to tinyurl.com slash Black People's Court. We, we really want people to fill out uh, the Black People's uh, survey because it, it is, it's a strategy to help win people to understand we we can do this. They don't have, we don't have to wait on them to say if it's approved or not. The other thing, because what they do, what you see all over, all over, uh, in most cities, they have what they call, um, uh, what do they call them? They call, uh, uh, it's like friendly to the, friendly to the state. I can't even think of, the name that they uh, call is normally associated with is normally associated with uh, with city council, and they have these uh, boards that support the police review boards. That's what they call them, police review boards. It does not in any kind of way. They don't have the power to hire, fire. They don't have the power to do anything other than assist. The, the police and in, 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 in revering itself, which is a conflict of interest and in, in from the jump. And so uh, this is this is a serious, a serious contradiction in, 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 in what we face with. And so we, we saying that we have to have our own court system. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You have been listening to Black Power Talks produced by WBPU, Black Power 96.3 FM in St. Petersburg, Florida. Today, we discuss Black community control of the judicial process with Kobina Banjushango, the Southern Regional Representative of the African People's Socialist Party, USA. Our theme song, Get Up and Do Something, was written and performed by Alika Ngoma. Thanks to the Black Power Talks production, research, and promotions team, including Jaja Robinson, Empress Livewire, and Ahipsa Panda. You can pray until you faint. If you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. And it's no need of running.